OK, great. So uh, these are kind of the boring instructions in quantum uh, computing, these classical reversible instructions. And like now let's talk about the interesting instructions, the exciting instructions, the superposition creating instructions, which, you know, I call them that just because they have this, they don't have the basic state in basic state out property. If like you give them a basic state, they will uh, produce something that's like a real superposition, like some non-trivial amplitude on, on zero and some non-trivial amplitude on uh, one or a basic state. So these are superposition creating instructions. These are the ones that really allow you to do like the magic of quantum computing. And to be honest, there's really only one. Well, okay, you can have any number of them, but like you sort of only need one. There's like one famous one, and it's sort of like the only one you ever need. Okay, it's this famous one called Hadamard. Okay, it's named after some mathematician. Uh, and it's a one qubit instruction. It only operates on one qubit. That's very convenient, it's simple. So I'm gonna usually call it that one qubit A. And uh, uh, we kind of saw this in lecture one. You know, we had this instruction in lecture one called Hadamard all. And that was just like my pseudocode shorthand for just doing the one qubit Hadamard instruction on all the qubits. Turns out we'll see later that if you, you know, are going to do like this Hadamard on all the qubits, it doesn't matter in which order you do them. So it's fine to just call it Hadamard all. But really, Hadamard is like just a one qubit instruction. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, let me just, I mean, put up the definition of the Hadamard instruction and like, you just have to memorize this. I mean, it's the only one where you really just need to memorize it. So please memorize it. Um, so if you do Hadamard on basic state zero, and it's like the question asked, like um, I'm only gonna define what happens when you do Hadamard on something that's in basic state zero or basic state one. But later I'll tell you how to infer what it does to a qubit in any state. So Hadamard on zero uh, yields, like the new uh, superposition state of A is square root a half amplitude on zero and square root a half amplitude on one. And that's, Valid. I mean, it's possible because remember, for this to be a valid superposition state, the squares of the amplitudes have to add up to one. So the squares of the amplitudes are a half plus a half. That adds up to one. So it's it's possible. That makes sense. And if you do Hadamard on a qubit that's in basic state one, it yields uh, this uh, superposition state square root a half amplitude on uh, zero and negative square root a half amplitude on basic state one. And again, that's a valid quantum state because the square of this plus the square of this is a half plus a half, which is uh, one. Okay, so this uh, is the definition of Hadamard. Just got to memorize it. Like there's square root of halves everywhere. And then like there's a negative sign here. Let me do a little side note on the number of square root of half. It's like my least favorite number. I really hate it. Uh, square root of a half. It's like, to me, it's like the moist of numbers. Like I wish we didn't have to talk about it, but we have to talk about it because it appears in this instruction. It's very annoying. Um, most people actually will write it like this, one over square root two. Uh, of course, that's the same number. Um, you know, the square root of A over B is square root of A over square root of B. So this is, they're all equal to like square root of one over square root two. Um, and sometimes when I'm feeling like particularly like enraged by like the annoying of this number, like I dream about just calling it uh, 0.7. This is basically 0.7 and like, I prefer to call it 0.7. Uh, but for a while, we're just gonna be proper and like constantly deal with this like annoying number square root of a half. Later, because I don't like it so much, I'll show you some trick that we'll use that will uh, allow us to like never mention it again. But you know, for now, like I don't want to add any extra tricks, so we'll just deal with the fact that we have this tedious number square root of a half always hanging out. Okay, so uh, 
just like every other instruction, like this has like a paths diagram representation, which itself is equivalent to a, a, a matrix representation, which I will now tell you. Yeah, question? Yeah, that's a great question. The question was like, you know, I mean, how does this amplitude come in? And like, how does like, I mean, why did we even bother? Why is it important that we have a negative sign here? I mean, the thing we know about amplitude, the one thing we like know about amplitudes now is like, if you know all the amplitudes of a superposition state, and then you do this extract all or measure on it, it tells you the probabilities. You can compute the probabilities, you'll see all the possibilities. And when you're doing this computation, like you square all these amplitudes, and uh, those are the probabilities. And you're like, well, a negative amplitude squared is the same as a positive amplitude squared. So, I mean, why do we need these like negatives? It should be the same thing. Uh, it comes in, as we'll get to by the end of this lecture, uh, hopefully. Um, once we start combining these instructions, like once we do like some code that has like a sequence of like, you know, a mixture of instructions, like toggles and if then toggles and Hadamards and things, we'll see that the amplitudes kind of like multiply against each other and add against each other. And they kind of get mixed around in an arithmetic way. And um, yeah, so you know whether they're positive or negative will make a difference to this. And really, like all of quantum programming is like designing your like sequence of instructions to like manipulate these amplitudes in a really like you know smart way. And so we'll see shortly uh, how some being positive and some being negative is really actually like the key to quantum computation and the fact that like. Sometimes you can arrange for like a positive amplitude to add with a negative amplitude and become zero. This is like one of the magic aspects of quantum computing. But we won't see that quite yet. We're still like, you know, just defining instructions. So let's uh, sort of make the truth table, if you will, of this like Hadamard instruction. Um, right? So it still looks kind of the same. We have like zero and one. These are the possible incoming uh, states. And zero and one are sort of the possible outgoing states. But now we need like full like labels on everything. So the way it works is um, if you're in basic state zero, this is what you go to, root half amplitude on zero. So we draw this. We write root half on it. And you get root half amplitude on one. So we draw this. We write root half on it. And similarly, if you're in basic state one, you get root half amplitude on zero. We draw this. Yeah, these are already kind of cluttered. And you get minus root a half amplitude on one. OK, so this uh, diagram is like equally encoding this information. And uh, sometimes the, uh, OK, let me say that later. We can also equally encode exactly the same information, which is effectively four numbers. We can arrange them into like a four by four box and form the matrix representation. Hmm, where did I put the eraser? Oh, it's in mind. There we go. Um, yeah, so let's do the matrix for Hadamard. Just to really hammer it home. It's going to be a two by two matrix, and it's going to have like a root half, root half, root half, minus root half. And they're arranged in this pattern because, you know, this is zero, one, we're kind of going this way, zero, one. Okay, so this is like these four numbers are the same as these four numbers. Okay, so these are all like the definition of the Hadamard instruction. The assembly language style, you know, shorthand for Hadamard is just H. So sometimes, like, we just say, oh, this instruction, Hadamard H, is like, is this matrix or like, is this path diagram? And uh, mathematicians had already studied like this particular matrix, maybe without the root halves, but with like plus, 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 minus. And like Jacques Hadamard studied this matrix, and therefore that's why it's called Hadamard instruction. Um, okay, so 
in some sense, like this is like the main superposition creating instruction. It's the only one like you need. If I like only gave you this instruction and no other superposition creating instructions, you'd be like, no problem. I can still do all of quantum computing just with this Hadamard. Um, I'm going to give you like two more instructions or maybe three more instructions just so we have like more examples. But like, really, this is the main one. So uh, another example, which we will like um, uh, basically never use, but you know, just to illustrate the point is here's another instruction that you can use. If A, then Hadamard B. The valid quantum instruction that let's say I allow you to use, it operates on two qubits. Um, it's called like CH or controlled Hadamard if you're a real um, quantum enthusiast, but we'll just call it if A, then Hadamard B. And I'll just, uh, it does what you would think. And I'll just draw its path diagram. And you can hopefully agree that this path diagram is consistent with what the name suggests it does. So it does this and this. Really, these have like labels of 1. It's kind of like if A is 0, then you don't do anything. And otherwise, it looks like Hadamard. So root a half minus root a half, and then root a half root a half. Yeah, I just want to show you like a two qubit example. Um, and it's not really easy to like build this example from the other instruction. So it's kind of, if you really wanted this, it's convenient that I just say like, you can have it, but we're really not going to use it very much. And let me give you two more instructions. And these instructions, again, are just so we have something to play with. So we have like more than one example. We don't have to use like the Hadamard example like every single time. Um, and I'll define them by their matrix, just you know, also to mix things up. So here's like a new instruction. This is a very idiosyncratic uh, name. Nobody uses this name, uh, but it's in my personal pseudocode. I'm going to call it the clockwise instruction. It operates on one qubit called A. And I'll draw you the matrix for it. It's got these you know, famous numbers, the only like non-annoying numbers uh, whose squares add up to 1. And that's the matrix. So again, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so this says that like this instruction has the property that if A is in basic state 0, and you do this clockwise instruction on it, the new state is 0.8 amplitude on 0 and negative, point ampli negative 0.6 amplitude on 1. OK, and analogously, if you start at 1. And I'll give you one final instruction counterclockwise on A, which has a similar looking matrix. That will be really cool. And I won't even write the edge row and column labels for you. You just have to remember them. Uh, that's like 0 0.8 and 0 0.6 and negative 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. I give them very like bizarre names, clockwise and counterclockwise. Maybe actually some you know uh, person out there in the audience knows has an idea why I call them this. Yeah, there's a geometric thing going on. If you remember your linear algebra, these are uh, rotation matrices in two dimensions. And more precisely, you know, we kind of know this fact that like every one qubit state looks like x amplitude on 0 and y amplitude on 1, where x squared plus y squared equals 1. So like every state you can think of as like a point, x comma y. And uh, this fact, for example, is telling you, this column fact is telling you that like clockwise maps this point to like this point. And if you like plot this on like the xy plane and you plot like this fact on the xy plane, 
Well, maybe you'll see it's rotating things by like 37 degrees clockwise. And similarly here. That's very intriguing, maybe. And we're going to talk a lot more about the geometry of quantum instructions later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.